Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hypop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we have a brand new and exciting unboxing. This is the brand new Godox 8200 Pro Mark II. So I have with me the brand new Godox 8200 Pro Mark II. This is the second version of their popular light, the 8200. It has been several years since this original light, the 8200, even before the 8200 Pro. The original 8200 was released, which is about eight or so years ago. So this is the new brand new version. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So first thing that you see is actually Godox have updated their branding. They have white boxes now. If you've seen our Godox 8600 Pro 2 unboxing, if you haven't yet, click the link up above. Um, they've also updated the box on that. So it's uh, great to see they're updating their branding. And here we have the case. They also have updated the case. It does look very minimal. Um, the materials look really good. They have their orange accenting for their branding here on the zippers. Um, overall, the case uh, looks really neat and high quality. Opening this up. And similar to the old case, it just opens up completely there. It's got two sides and you have on one side a zipper compartment, but this zipper compartment now is sort of like a waterproof material, as opposed to that sort of netted mesh material on their previous case. Uh, perhaps if you have small accessories in there, they used to get caught up in that mesh there, uh, but now it's this sort of waterproof material, which is great. On the inside here, we have a type C to type C cable. We have the user guide. We have a round head. We have the Godox 8200 Pro Mark II flash unit itself. We've got the WB29 battery, and this is the updated WB29B. It is a 2980 milliamp hour battery, uh, 42.9 watt hours and 14.4 volts. You've got that flash tube for the 8200 Pro. This is the bare bulb tube the 200 watt bare bulb tube, really similar to the previous design, if not identical, which we can check. We have the tilt bracket here, and that's the tilt bracket that allows you to mount the 8200 Pro on top. It's a quarter inch thread, and you also have the umbrella mount there. You have the charger and also an AC plug here with a type C connection on one side. So these are all meant to be paired together. Um, it's good to see they've reduced the size and gone to type C for their charger as well, because that reduces the size of the charger here. You can see the charging plate is quite small. It's basically the same size as the battery, just like that. You've got the type C cable and you've also got the type C charger. Now this type C charger here is a five volt, uh, three amp, charger um, so nothing uh, spectacular in terms of speed um, however you can most certainly plug charge it with this or you can plug this usb type c into other chargers uh, with a similar output if you're wanting to sort of charge that, that battery a little faster so i have the 8200 pro mark ii here on a stand as well as the original 8200 pro just so we can compare them side by side so what are the key differences with this brand new model here similar to the 8600 pro mark ii if you want to take a closer look at the unboxing of that one click the link up above they have transferred some of those features and those changes over to these mark ii versions of these lights including the 8200 pro mark ii what does that mean the first update to this flash here is the color tft screen which you can see on the back here of the flash so this is a color screen it's a lot more legible uh, in bright sunlight and it's easier to read and see and you can see it's more of a high-res screen as opposed to the older screen Another update they've done is they've now got in 0.1 stop increments, power output all the way down to one over 512, as opposed to one over 256 on the previous model. So you do have a lot more stops of power here that you can access on this new model. A third change they've made is also the color group indicator. So you can see there on group, it's currently on A, which is red. You have LED indicators now that you can see from a distance that match the group's colors. So when I change this group over to B, which you'll see there, and I'll head back into flash, B is green, and the color indicator here has changed to green, which is great, especially when you're controlling groups of flashes or using multiple flashes. Another update they've done to this light here is they've reintroduced the port here for an external power source. So this is an input here for an external power source, such as the Godox PB, 960, which is one of their older pro pack battery packs that they were using for their speed lights. But they've reintroduced this port here so you are able to use this 
which now gives you access to longer power, uh, you know, delivery instead of just relying on the battery here and also quicker recycle time. So this is good, especially if you're an event or wedding photographer and you're wanting to ensure that you have power to last and not having to change the batteries out. Also improving the recycle time because the source of power is a stronger power source. On top of that, to improve for those wedding and event photography, as well as for bursts of shots, they've improved the cooling system in their heads. So this is the new round head for the Godox 8200 Pro Mark II, which is their bare bulb head. And as you can see, it's completely different to the original model. The original model didn't really have any sort of modeling lamp on the actual head itself. Whereas you can see there are obvious LED beads here on this modeling lamp head. And it also converts it into a round head here too. Now this round head provides additional room here to have a more improved cooling system. And you can see some grills here on the side and there's like a heat sink system here. However, on their Fresnel head, which you can see there, you can also see a fan port here. So on the fan port, it actually has an advanced cooling system. So that will help improve your workflow and reduce those overheating problems when shooting with the 8200 Pro Mark II for prolonged periods. Now the actual head itself is interchangeable as you're aware. So we'll remove this tube here. So that's the flash tube, it's removable. You can replace these as well. There's the glass protector of the flash tube. So it protects that xenon or flash element on the inside. These are removable just like so. And you can swap it over to the Fresnel head like that. Now, when you do swap it over to the Fresnel head, it now accesses a faster flash duration for the 8200 Pro Mark II, similar to the 8600 Pro Mark II. So you have a flash duration of one over 23,400, which is a very fast sort of flash that will help you freeze frame motion. So if you're doing things like water drops or motion like dancing, then you'll be able to access that with the Fresnel head. The bare bulb head also has a fairly fast flash duration, but not as fast as the Fresnel head. Now the Fresnel head also has LED beads here as their modeling lamp and their modeling lamps for both of these are now by color. This one's 5.7 volts and this is slightly stronger. I'll put that up on screen as to what the output is. And these are now by color. So that means your modeling lamp can change from 2800 Kelvin all the way up to 6000 Kelvin, which is great because that means you can use that modeling lamp as sort of like an ambient light. You can match ambient light if you need to shoot some small video or if you just need a continuous light source to help you pull focus in a low light situation, then that's a great addition there. A stronger modeling light is always a plus, especially the fact that it's running from the same power source, which is just the WB29 battery without interfering or you know disrupting the, uh, the power drain from the flash itself. So we're going through the menu on the 8600 Pro Mark II here. Firstly, there has been a change to the on off switch as you'll see at the bottom right here. The test button now doubles up as a power button or the on off switch. You also have the modeling lamp button. You have mode, menu. You have the control wheel here as well as the set button. Jumping into the menu, first thing we see is a few menu options and the first one is wireless mode. So here you can jump in, you can turn wireless on or off. You can also change the channel of the flash, so when you're pairing this up to a Godox X trigger, you can change the group and you can also change the ID. And the ID is useful, it goes from zero to 99. This is useful when you have multiple Godox shooters or people using uh, Godox X triggers and you're on the same channel or group and there may be interference, it'll be good to set your own ID to lock in your flash or your trigger um, to ensure there's no interference. And lastly, you have wireless sync. So this model being a Mark II does have the one touch wireless sync to the Godox X3 trigger. And if you've seen that one, we've unboxed and taken a closer look at that trigger. So click the link up above if you wanna see that one. Jumping over into menu, you can see flash mode, there's normal, color, um, and those are the two modes that you can go for. And color is the color stability mode. And what that does is it allows you to go into color stable mode. So you only have a plus or minus 100K variance on the flash if the work that you're doing is color critical. So if you don't want too much color variance and also difference uh, and, and things to do in post, then color mode is, is also a good mode to enable. You have photo cell and this allows you to put on slave mode in S1 or S2. You have high speed sync all the way up to one over eight thousandth of a second. You can turn that on or off. You have modeling lamp, so you can have that on continuous inter as well. So you can have two modes there for your modeling lamp. 
You have beep, so you can turn on the audible beep of the flash when it fires. That's the beep on. And that's the beep off with no beep. You have type, so you can also change the type from fractions or decimals there in terms of the power output. You have standby mode, so how quickly the LCD screen or the TFT screen actually um, goes into standby mode. So you have it on one minute all the way up to 30, so 30 seconds all the way up to three minutes. And you have auto off. You can do this in 30 minute intervals, 30, 60, 90, 120. And brightness, you can change the brightness of this TFT screen. Flash delay, so you can set a delay from 0.1 0.01 seconds to 30 seconds for when the flash fires after it being triggered. You have masking, so you can set two, three, or four masks, and this is for um, masking techniques. If you want to take a closer look at that, there's plenty of YouTube videos uh, online about how to use masking on a flash. Language, switching between English and Chinese, and reset. So if you're wanting to hard reset the flash, go to yes, and that'll show you, and that'll go to a reset there. And lastly is device info and that shows you the model as well as the version, the firmware version of the flush. So one thing to take note of with the brand new 8200 Pro Mark II is that it is backwards compatible with all the previous 8200 Pro flush heads and accessories. That includes the R200 ring flush, you've got the ADS200 uh, new stick, that's the flush stick. Uh, that they release. You've also got the other accessories such as you know the old ADL which is a little continuous light. You've got all the ADS range of uh, lighting modifiers including the beauty dish, the collapsible softbox, you've got reflectors, you've got snoots, all these sort of things. They are still compatible with the 8200 Pro Mark II. However with the brand new head here which is the round head, the bare bulb head, I wanted to see if it still fit into the S2 bracket, which is this thing here. It certainly does. Um, there was the knob here on the side that was sort of, you know, making me think it won't fit there, but it does as long as you're mounting it from the front position here of the S2 bracket and clamping down. So you do have the light source still sort of protruding out. Um, it doesn't go all the way in or sit flush up against the, the mount. However, that will still feel a modifier such as a softbox, a Bowen softbox or an umbrella if you'll be using those. So that's great to see. There is also the other accessory, which is the AKR22. And that is this thing here. So that's the AKR22. And this is a silicon sort of material light dome diffuser. And this is typically used or paired with the V1 flash as well as the AD100 Pro round head. Uh, that's what it's made for and that diameter there is fixed. It doesn't sort of, it has a little bit of give, but um, it's fairly fixed in terms of its size. This now fits over this new round head bare bulb of the AD200 Pro Mark II. And I've tested that there and the tube is actually not hitting any parts of the diffuser here. So that's a great accessory now that you can pair with the brand new AD200 Pro Mark II. Now, can you use the AKR1 accessory kit, which was made for the V1 heads or the AD100 Pro heads? And is this round head magnetic? It is not. So we've tested that as well. And you most certainly can't use the AKR1 accessories because of the bare bulb here. And that's protruding out and that won't work with the accessories. However, you can still grab the H200R round head, which is a Fresnel round head instead of a bare bulb head, which is a former accessory if you're wanting to use those accessories, the AKL one, as well as um, anything that suits the round head flush. So those are a couple of little side notes there that we've uh, found and tested with the 8200 Pro Mark II. So is it worth the upgrade to the brand new 8200 Pro Mark II? In my opinion, I believe it is, simply because the price point it's been set is the same price as the former model, the 8200 Pro. So it kind of means that like for like, when you're looking at it side by side, the new features are warranted in terms of the upgrade. I feel like the addition of the modeling lamp is really a good bonus. You've got that color stability mode. You've also got the power stop increments there all the way down to one over 512. You've got that fast flash duration. You've got the color group indicators. You've got so many updates to this particular flash that I think it's warranted. Now you may be able to still grab an 8200 Pro on sale as soon as the price cut starts coming down. And I think that's it's still a perfectly reliable workhorse flash. And it's one that's been tried and tested in the market. 
And I feel like all photographers love this flash for what it's done to flash photography and the off-camera flash sort of setup. I feel like the 8200 Pro is gonna be one of those new staples that's gonna carry us moving forward. And it's good to see that Godox are now updating their flash ranges to the second version, the Mark II versions. They've started with the 600 Pro Mark II, 8200 Pro Mark II. I'd be assuming that they'd be coming out with the 8400 Pro Mark II, which is by far one of our most popular flash models that, uh, that we sell here at Hypop. So it's great to see the continuation of these lines and they are backwards compatible, which means that you can still use all of those accessories if you've accumulated some of those in the past. Now for more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comment section below your thoughts or if you have any questions about the brand new Godox 8200 Pro Mark II. Follow us on social media, the links are down below, and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.